In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, my name is Archimandre Father Mikael, exorcist priest in the Eastern Orthodox Church. We're an autocephalous church from the one true old calendar canonical Greek Orthodox Church from Alexandria. Today I have this Bible um, that I recently got. It is a Catholic Bible. Um, I'm working on getting a uh, uh, special uh, Orthodox Bible, the red leather one. If you're Orthodox, you probably are aware of it. It's about $100, so God willing, at some point in time, I'll be able to get one of those, which has the early morning prayers and evening prayers and um, some history of the Orthodox Church in there and a lot of helps um, and information um, in regard to our Orthodox Church. But I did find this Bible for $9. Um, I talked about it in my last video. Um, so it was actually a nine seventy five. dollars came out to like $10.40. Um, it's the uh, New American Bible, it's a Catholic Bible, um, and it uh, has all the books, the Catholic books in there. As you would know if you've uh, been Catholic and you know it's not like um, regular uh, King James Bible, it just basically has uh, more like a Protestant type of just basic scriptures. Um, it doesn't have all the books um, from the Septuagint and various things uh, in there, like uh, the Catholic Bible does, and I believe the Orthodox Bible as well uh, contains all the books as well. But anyways, there's uh, one of the books that I'm going to read from today, which is has a prayer, and this is taken from the Wisdom of Ben uh, Sira. You can see here. Um, see if I was to go to. It's right after the Book of Wisdom, um, and it says, um, it says here, see if I can show you real quick. So for some of you that may not know, just before I read the prayer, or say the prayer is, the Wisdom of Ben Sira derives its title from the author Yeshua, Jesus son of Eleazar, son of Sira, 5027. This seems to be the earliest title of the book and the designation Liber Ecclesiasticus, meaning church book. Appended to some Greek and Latin manuscripts is perhaps due to the extensive use the church made of this book in presenting moral teaching to catechumens and to the faithful. The title Sirach comes from the Greek word of the author's name. The author and sage who lived in Jerusalem was thoroughly imbued with love for the wisdom tradition and also for the law, priesthood, temple, and divine worship as a wise and experienced observer of life. He addressed himself to his contemporaries with the motive of helping them to maintain religious faith and integrity through study of the books sacred to the Jewish tradition. The books contained numerous well-crafted maximas grouped by affinity and dwelling with a variety of subjects such as the individual, the family, and the community in their relations with one another and with God. It treats uh, friendships, education, poverty and wealth, laws, religious worship, and many other matters that reflect the religious and social customs of the time. Written in Hebrew in the early years of the second century BC, that is before Christ, the book was finished by CA 175. The text was translated into Greek by the author's grandson after 117 BC. He also wrote a foreword which contains valuable information about the book, its author, and himself as, trans as translator. Until the close of the 19th century, the wisdom of Ben Sira was known to Christians in translation, of which the Greek rendering was the most important. 
from it the Latin version was made between 1896 and 1900 again in 1931 and several times since 1956 incomplete manuscripts were discovered so that more than two-thirds of the book in Hebrew is available these Hebrew texts agree substantially with the Greek one such texts from Masada in pre-Christian in date. The New American Bible provides a critical translation based on the evidence of all the ancient texts. Though not included in the Jewish Bible after the first century AD, nor therefore accepted by Protestants, the wisdom of Ben Sira has been recognized by the Catholic Church as inspired and canonical. The foreword through not properly part of the book is always included with it because of its antiquity and importance. The contents of the wisdom of Ben Sarah are of a discursive nature, not easily divided into separate parts. Chapter 1 through 43 deal largely with moral instruction. 44, 1 through 50 and 24 contain an eulogy of the herbs of Israel. There are two appendix in which the author expresses his gratitude to God, chapter 51, verses 1 through 12, and invites the unschooled to acquire true wisdom, chapter 51, verses 13 to 30. Um, so what I'm going to read is taken uh, from chapter 36 in the Catholic Bible, in the book Wisdom of Ben Sira. So let us begin with a prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be to all of you. Come to our aid, O God of the universe, and put all the nations in dread of you. Raise your hand against the foreign people that they may see your mighty deeds as you have used us to show them your holiness. So now use them to show us your glory. Thus they will know as we know that there is no God but you. Give new signs and work new wonders. Show forth the splendor of your right hand and arm. Rouse your anger, pour out wrath. Humble the enemy, scatter the foe, hasten the ending, appoint the time, and let people proclaim your mighty deeds. Let raging fire consume the fugitive, and your people oppressors meet destruction. Crush the heads of the hostile rulers who say there is no one beside me. Gather all the tribes of Jacob, that they may inherit the land as in the days of old. Show mercy to the people called by your name, Israel, whom you named your firstborn. Take pity on your holy city, Jerusalem, and dwelling place. Fill Zion with your majesty, your temple with your glory. Give evidence of your deeds of old Fulfill the prophecies spoken in your name. Reward those who have hoped in you. Let your prophets be proved true. Hear the prayer of your servants according to your good will towards your people. Thus all the ends of the earth will know that you are the eternal God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Now I'm going to go directly to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 19. No, chapter 11, Book of Revelation in the New Testament, The Two Witnesses. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff that was 
and I was told, Come and measure the temple of God and the altar, and count those who are worshipping in it. But exclude the outer court of the temple, do not measure it, for it has been handed over to the Gentiles, who will trample the holy city for forty-two months. I will commission my two witnesses to prophesy for those twelve hundred and sixty days, wearing sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone wants to harm them, fire comes out of their mouths and devours their enemies. In this way, anyone wanting to harm them is sure to be slain. They have the power to close up the sky so that rain, no rain can fall during their time of their prophesying. They also have power to turn water into blood and to affect the earth with any plague as often as they wish. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will wage a war against them and conquer them and kill them. Their corpses will lie in the main street of the great city, which has the symbolic name Sodom and Egypt, where indeed their Lord was crucified. And those from every people, tribe, and tongue, and nation will gaze on their corpses for three and a half days, and they will not allow their corpses to be buried. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and be glad and exchange gifts because these two prophets tormented the inhabitants of the earth. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them. And when they stood on their feet, great fear fell on those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven say to them, Come up here. So they went up to heaven in a cloud as their enemies looked on. At that moment, there was a great earthquake, and tenth of the city fell in ruins. Seven thousand people were killed during the earthquake. The rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed, but the third woe is coming soon. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.